Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. We hope you guys are doing well. We want to share with you uh, what we've been getting as far as Atlantis. And also we'll touch on Lemuria and we'll touch on many things. Uh, what we have gotten through interactions and channeling uh, over the past, well, many months, really, that we have not put together into one piece. And especially we've been doing uh, a lot of channeling the last several days, multiple times a day and middle of the nights as well. Uh, so we want to share with you what we're getting. And I had mentioned Gerald Clark um, yesterday's video and I, you know, admire the dedication and research he put into it, as well as, you know, people like Matthew LaCroix. And, and there's so many people out there that have done a lot of research that have looked in deep into, say, you know, Atlantis, Lemuria, the Anunnaki, the different gods and different goddesses out there. And, you know, that's wonderful that they've shared what they've discovered what we want to do is give you a perspective that may be a little bit different at, in, in many ways is in opposition to some of the research that's been done by others. But the reason why is because when we're doing research and we're just going off of reading the work of others, then it's entirely left brain for the most part. We may use our intuition a little bit and we might sort things out and give a little more credence to this, a little bit less credence to that. But again, you're getting secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand, twentiethhand, thousandhand information. So if you're able to, why not go direct? Why not get the information for yourself? Everybody has the ability to do things like remote view. The governments of this world have spent many, many millions of dollars in countless hours remote viewing each other and remote viewing the past, remote viewing the future. It's a reality. And as I say this, I feel uh, remote <laughs> pains in my heart chakra as you know, this is already bringing up uh, basically energetic attacks. But it's the fact we can connect for ourselves. We can actually connect to many of these beings we hear in legends. We could actually interact with them. And we could discover who they are for ourselves. You cannot hide an energy signature. Uh, recently, we have done channelings uh, with Isis and with also Mother Mary as well as with the Galactic Federation, uh, as well as other entities out there. And you could tell each one is a unique being with their own energy signature, very, very different from the other. So it came in my feed last night, uh, a video that was an interview between Matthew LaCroix and Gerald Clark, and I was listening to him and I was thinking, oh, good, good, this is interesting. And then basically they, they were starting to talk about making Enki out to be the same being as some other very different beings like Osiris or Ta. And they're nothing alike. They are not the same beings even remotely. And if you had the ability to feel what it's like to be in their presence, then you would know these are completely different beings. This is part of the problem out there is that there's so many layers to it, so many different beings. There are beings that are literal flesh and blood beings that walk the earth amongst humans that we have taken to be gods. Then there are beings that never walk the earth amongst humans that are also taken to be gods. There are beings that are planetary consciousnesses, such as the consciousness itself of, say, Venus or Mars or Saturn or Jupiter, you know, the Earth itself, all these planets have their own distinct personalities, their own distinct consciousnesses, as they are individuals. And yet they're collectives, too. And we're part of that collective, say, of the collective of Earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the sun has its own personality or personalities, as there's more than one being actually in the sun. And then the stellar influences. Every star is a being with a distinct personality. And some of these beings 
have these stellar beings have been taken to be gods as well. So you have so many different things going on at the same time. We're at fault when we say everything is a demon. If it's not a human, if it's not the creator, prime creator, source, the real source, uh, you know, again, it's either angels or demons or nothing else. You know, that that's not a correct view. There are beings that never lived on the earth, never will live on the earth, but they're alive out there and they're experiencing creation. There are interdimensional beings that are able to lower and raise their vibrational frequency just by will, and I've experienced them firsthand, so I know they're real. Because I've watched one in front of me when I woke up, and it was solid as day, and then it looked away from me, and then it shifted, and in about, I'd say, 90 seconds, it was gone. And in between, it kind of looked like Beam Me Up Scotty. It turned into an energy pattern. Not so solid, turned into an energy pattern, and then was gone. So for me, it, it's direct knowledge. I know because I've experienced these things. Cindy's experienced interaction with all sorts of beings, too. We both have countless times. Uh, you know, it, it hits me, too. Like, they talk about Yeshua, Jesus, and they talk about the way he taught. And they were struck by it because he taught as not somebody that's using his left brain, where I think this is the case. I believe this is the case. No, he talked as someone who knows. And we could go knows with a G as in gnosis, which is again, direct experience. When you have experienced something, you know it. Everything else is conjecture. Until you, it don't, until you experience it for yourself, it's all a belief system. It's conjecture. It's logic. It's rationalization. It's, well, you know, this seems like, you know, A plus B equals C. That makes sense, you know. But when we see people confirm the existence of beings like the Anunnaki and the Ijiji, but then take beings that have nothing to do with them at all and lump them all together, again, we're missing the point and we're deluding ourselves. We're not seeing the big picture. See, there's layers to this. There's one layer in the control grid that's going to keep people, a certain subset of people, always thinking it's either angels or demons. And then there's God, and then there's us. There's nothing else. There'll be another subset that will believe, yeah, of course there's extraterrestrials. And of course there's ancient aliens. So every single myth, the myths about Isis, the myths about Osiris, the myths about Thoth, the myths about white buffalo, white buffalo calf woman maybe even might be considered to be an ET. Yeshua may even be considered to be an ET. Um, it'll go on down the line. And, and soon we're saying everything is the Anunnaki. No, not everything is the Anunnaki. There were beings that were here upon the earth that did walk amongst us that were not homo sapiens sapiens and walked amongst us and had higher technology. And yet there were also beings that have never walked upon the earth that were worshipped as gods. Right. Um, there's just so many different things, so many different layers. And what they want is they want people to be um, stuck in the paradigm of, of, you know, angels and demons. And then that's all. So then they don't have to answer any questions. They don't have to come out and prove anything. You know, they don't have to come up with any, any new answers as long as people are just stuck under this rock well, it's either aliens or demons. You know, that's a very, very safe place for them to keep people. And believe me, they go, oh my gosh, lengths. They do what they got to do to keep people from exploring and understanding what else is out there. Um, even, you know, it comes to down to manipulation. You know, they might make people uncomfortable. And a lot of people, you know, on their own, when they are looking outside of certain scriptures uh, with their own ego, they get afraid because that's all they know. That's all they grew up with since they were tiny, tiny, going to Sunday school, learning all, all of these things. So the ego is always wanting to protect itself. The ego is something hey, you know that keeps you alive. So if you step outside of what you've learned and known all of your life, the ego's like, hey, wait, you know, this could get us in trouble here. So they know that we're fighting against our ego, and they they play it very well. 
So when we look back to the Lemurian civilization, Lemuria, Mu, it's one that is rooted in fifth density. So as we've talked about, as the the cycles go, the yuga cycles, the precession of the equinox, as we go through our circle in space, so to speak, the sun goes through its big precession. We are in different areas and we are affected by different energies. And when we're in that golden age, we vibrationally are higher up so that we could be in contact with more benevolent beings. It's just that simple. So then we, when we could reach certain states in meditation higher, like for instance, uh, right now, you know, I might be in 3D. When I sleep, I'm in basically 4D. But when I'm in, in meditation at times, I could just about touch. Am I touching 5D at times? With, oh, yeah, yeah. People, people who are working on their spiritual body, um, people who are doing the work, they definitely can touch on 5D quite often. Yeah, so we're actually literally touching on 5D now. So when we are in the golden age, the Satya Yuga, and we are doing meditations and stuff, we can touch up into 6D. See, we could go higher. And so then we're actually having very clear visions and actually able to communicate with beings that are six density, which are collectives for the most part. Six density is the beginning. That's where we really are going into being a collective. Um, fifth density is where many beings choose to stay because it's just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you view fifth density, it's, it's almost like viewing yourself as being uh, a quote-unquote God with the ability to do things, create things out of thin air, change circumstances, fly, do whatever you want to do, travel to other places instantaneously, uh, using your Merkaba. It, it's, it's, it's just a blast. 5D is just so much fun. Uh, 6D has this sense of love to it. Now, 5D does too, but 6D has a sense of love that is starting to understand to an even higher degree the oneness of all. And that's more of a collective mentality. And as you go on up higher, then eventually you're coming to that total unity consciousness that is source. And source is alive in all of us, alive and well in every single one of us. And a lot of people don't realize that there is source power in you. And this is why, this is why. You could banish demons. It's not that you're calling on uh, the power of Yeshua or Isis necessarily, although those beings can help you. They could definitely help. They could lend their energy to you. It's really the fact that we tap into our own source energy. And again, we were touching on the fact that they make you think source or -e, is evil. Why? Well, because you're tapping into source yourself, you're not going by the program that they've given you. You know, you have to be part of this Borg mentality. That's what they want. They want you to be part of the Borg. They want you to accept a counterfeit uh, from the divine plan. What's the divine plan? The divine plan is that ultimately source has divvied itself up into innumerable forms of life all different types of life. Source sends itself out into its creation, and then source comes back into itself. And each one of us is a divine spark of source, of that eternal flame that is source. And right now we're on that outward path and we've gone and we're exploring, and many of us are starting to return home. Mm -hmm. it's, it's heading back into that return path, which will lead eventually First, to a heavenly 5D experience that is an absolute blast and, and just, you know, it, it's an amazing experience where, again, you are creating your own world, basically, to live in. We are all co-creators here. They want to take our co-creative -co ability out and they want us to manifest their reality. Again, that is the controlling system. Who is the controlling system? Well, there is a group that begins with an I and ends with an I. And there are many other uh, secret societies, per se, that are part of the control grid. You know, we've talked about Freemasonry, and we've talked about certain groups like the S and B group that's in Yale, Skull, 
And what other hard substances mm -hmm. besides the skull are there in the mm -hmm. body, right? And why did they venerate 33? Well, there's 33 vertebrae. That's what we're talking about. This is Jacob's ladder, guys. It's the vertebrae that climb up. The goddess energy, the shakti energy, which they want you fearing, is dormant in your spine, at the base of your spine. You hold the key to the heavenly realms in the base of your spine. You have to open your chakras. You have to initiate the kundalini flow, activate fully the pineal gland, get your wings, which is your merkaba. The wings of an angel is the merkaba. Plain and simple. That's what it is. Angels, because of their merkaba, can, can go up and down through density. And we have that potential. We can be angels. And that's what we are, basically, when we are in a golden age. Atlantis was basically a conglomeration of many different races of many, many different beings that were, were living in relative harmony. Relative harmony. But Atlantis basically did experience the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to share? Well, um, I mean, it's, yeah, there, there was these technologies this is what this is what comes to me technologies of the body and the spirit and the earth and these entities practiced that for quite a while until other entities decided to come join and bring other technologies like we see that we have here with us you know not not exactly cell phones and computers but different technologies separate from earth and in trying to rise up with their technologies and trying different things, this is where Atlantis experienced the crack and actually just gone. Um, somebody really made a huge mistake. I mean, huge. And it was all over technology, you know, and the type of technology they shouldn't be messing with. And again, here we are at a place where there's technologies that really are not safe for this planet. And, I don't know if it could happen, Atlantis happen over again, but I, I don't think we're too far from it. I think the wrong thing, just like in, in Atlantis, if they do the wrong thing, hit the wrong button, flip the wrong switch, everything could be gone. Um, only those beings that were actually able to understand what was going on, I feel, survived. Just a handful of them did survive, you know, that understood the technology and carried on. Mm -hmm. And so one of the other interesting things that we got is many, many problems arrived when the, the Martians arrived. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we say the Martians, we mean the Ajiji. And, you know, the Ajiji, again, were basically working for the Anunnaki. And they were on Mars. And then, you know, they basically, there's that whole story of the revolt and Mars, of course, had its cataclysm. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who brought down the technology to mix with um, the Atlanteans, their technology, Earth technology. Yeah, you know, so the Martians are the, the and think about it, Mars, the god of war. Why do you think we get that, that opinion? Well, you know, it's, it's the system again. It's the, it's the Anunnaki system. It's the Nibiru N system. You know, what we get and it doesn't feel right is the 3,600 year orbit. Many things are correct as far as, like we shared with you guys, Nibiru is more of a ship than a planet. It was a planet. It's basically pretty much on life support, if not almost totally dead. It was actually a feminine energy planet. It was a goddess energy planet that these beings ruined and did exactly what they're doing to the earth you know rape pillage and abuse everything that's on it as these are truly just basically intergalactic interdimensional pirates when you get down to it not gods interdimensional pirates they just loot pillage rape and plunder this is how they work and in you know the case of mars when the devastation came uh the gg came here and they brought their technology here. When we see those long cylinder, you know, long cone heads, uh, those are EGG. And so the EGG 
rule over the secret societies, such as that other group that starts with an I and ends with an I, you know, the S and B, the Masons, uh, the Bohemian Grove people. I mean, we could go on and on with all these secret societies. They all report to the Gigi. And, you know, one of the um, people that I knew was an insider referred to, the, to them as the elders. And, you know, trying to make me think that they're referring to a benevolent being, but no better. You know, these elders are the GG. And I asked Cindy, are there any of them that are still around from like the initial coming in? And, and you got the picture of one kind of almost on like a crazy sort of life support. Yes, an AI type of life support, you know, from then what I'm talking about is the original. So we're talking hundreds of years, but they had well, that technology. Thousands. Well, yeah, hundreds thousands. and thousands of years, but they did have that technology. And there is one. And uh, when I look, you know, it's being kept on through AI. It's really quite creepy. Yeah. And that's part of that AI merger. Think about this too. You know, they could keep the body going. They could replace parts with new parts, keep the body going. It's almost like a soul entrapment when you get down to it, you know, because there is a reference that in those days, a biblical reference, men will look for death, but it will elude them. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, yeah, if we get assimilated into the Borg, your your soul might want to shed this body and move on and get away from it uh, because of everything that's happening here and not be able to because it's trapped in the body being you know held there by these technologies. It is. It's really, really quite disturbing if you go into it and, and think about it. But, you know, this is kind of what we're facing if we don't turn it around or find another way to live, you know, step out of the system, do things differently, understand our source power, understand what we can do with it, raise up in vibration and be at peace. You know, I mean, right now, everybody's running around. They're so busy. They're trying to, you know, work eight, 10, 14 hour days. They're, you know, trying to keep their house clean. They're trying to pay all their bills. And, you know, we are human beings beings we're not human doings and they have us in this space where we're just do 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 we are supposed to be and like bloom kind of like a flower but how many of you have time to just sit and be as a human being should yeah think about that if we were if we had the time to not be in this system I think many people would awaken and discover these things, would, would see, hey, wait a minute, something's not right here. So, yes, Atlantis basically went wrong. Uh, and again, this was many different species of beings, all different types mm -hmm. of beings that were living together. Uh, was it a perfect mix? No. I mean, they, they had some issues. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I view it, and I don't know if you see it exactly the same, I kind of view it Atlantis as being the bridge between 5D going down to 3D. Mm -hmm. You know, it spanned like that period of time. Maybe it was just touching on when 5D was collapsing downward as we were heading more towards the Kali Yuga and then pass through that bridge and then into the Kali Yuga, you know, that we have been in. Yeah, and that's a really good point where, you know, the Kali Yuga is as it change, as it changes, times have to change, scenarios and um, situations have to change, just like, but how, in which way do they change? You know, is that controllable? And I feel those changes are controllable, kind of like where we're at now. We have the ability to control the kind of change we're going through, but the one thing that we cannot do is not have change. Change always has to happen. It's always changing. And just like our DNA is always changing. Isn't it fascinating, too, that when you look into so many of the myths and legends, uh, there's myths and legends of humans falling in love with the fairy folk. And sometimes are, there's missing time, right? Uh, yeah, there's many uh, myths about, say, for instance, a guy that falls asleep on the, a fairy hill, a fairy mound and envisions a beautiful fairy coming to him and he falls in love with her and he goes down into the mound and it seems like it's just a day or two pass and then he's he's just missing his family he's got to go back home and so eventually he comes out 
and then two, three years have transpired. Mm -hmm. And so much of it is about the union of humans with other non-human entities. And then we see all of the UFO, modern UFO accounts, and all the genetic experiments going on. And many accounts of people saying that they're seeing humans in things like this. And Cindy has, yeah, when we, we've been up in ships, you've seen oh, gosh, this type of thing. Most definitely, you know, and I think one of the most uh, impactful times that had ever happened to me is when I was taken up to a ship and looking back, I, I was being reprogrammed. And that's the kind of direct experience and gnosis that helps you actually connect to other people and have that understanding of, yeah, you were you were abducted too. Yes, this is what happens. And it happens often. And yes, I've definitely seen stuff like this. Yeah, there's there's all different sorts of beings out there. There are many that are definitely malevolent. There are those that are basically indifferent in a sense that they just they're opportunists. There's some that are semi-respectful, you know, that will go about their business as long as you don't get in their way. They won't really harm you in any way, shape, or form. And then there's other ones that are actually very, very benevolent. You know, we look back at these, and is this just inflating a king's ego by by showing him, and this is Gilgamesh, who is thought to be a demigod, uh, show him that it's so big and so strong that a lion looks like a little kitty. Mm -hmm. as you see the size of a lion next to a human. So you could see that a, a human would basically come up maybe a little bit past his knee, you know, mid-thigh, maybe, mm -hmm. you know. And so we have all these legends of giants and hybrids. There's all different sorts of beings out there. There's tons of different sorts of beings out there. It's a reality. And, uh, you know, when you think about ancient times and the, uh, the legends is we you know get taken back to the pillars of Hercules that were supposed to be there, um, and you know again Atlantis was just offshore so to speak. But Atlantis was a it was a global civilization. Mm -hmm. Think about it in terms of um, kind of breakaway civilizations where you had people that basically were living uh, stone age life and then you have at the same time people that were living a very high tech life so if you were somebody that was say a human that's only incarnated on earth nowhere else which again that's about two-thirds of the people maybe a little bit more uh, that are here all they've known is this 3d 4d experience as far as their soul goes and this is all they've known and then there's others that have had lives in other planets that just kind of know more than the ones that are here. The ones that have only been here, I, I feel they're more gullible for the most point, be, most part because they don't have the flashback memories. They don't have these visions. They don't have these just knowings that there's a lot of life out there. Maybe they're not visited as so many people are. I wonder what percentage of the population is truly uh, has a undergone an abduction experience i bet you it's more than 10 percent yeah i guarantee you it's more than 10%. well it's also because they put you in a state where most of the time you you don't remember you just you just have these instances of missing time and remember they have technologies that we can barely fathom so i believe for sure it's more than 10 percent you know, all these stories about giants in stasis, and we've actually gotten that, yeah, that there are giants in stasis. Yeah. Uh, not only giants in stasis, but that there were dogmen in stasis that have been woken up by the good guys right now to go against some of the, you know, dark hats, so to speak. And recognize that, you know, politicians, global politicians that we see on the scene, even if they had the purest heart, there's only so much they could do right now in the system because the, the controllers, well, again, biblically, who controls the world? Who's the guy of the world? Satan, right? The adversary. It's not one individual with a pitchfork and horns. You know, that's the archaic way of looking at things. It's not one individual. It's a system. It's the system that is the adversary of free will. Right. And what's really important to us is to help you guys understand and even try to teach you how 
to look at things and use your own free will, you know, kind of step outside of that safely protect, protected information source that you've always lived with and help you realize that, yes, there is so much more out there that I have been told. So when Atlantis, you know, crumbled, I mean, there were some survivors and they scattered everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they scattered all across the globe and, and in pockets in different places. You know, then we have the War of the Gods, like we had said. So there were the Atlanteans, and the root word is Atlan. And then there was the Gigi that came, and they came basically when Atlantis was already here and well established. And the Gigi again uh, were subservient to the Anunnaki. Uh, this is where we are in 4D, heading into the lower f- aspects of 4D, which allowed them vibrationally to to come into our sphere of influence, and ultimately the Gigi, the Anunnaki, the Greys that work for them. Uh, and then the human entities that work for them are all basically under the Draco. And the Draco are more of a 4D level of being for the most part. They they can manifest in 3D. Some can actually rise up to the lowest areas of 5D. But for the most part, they are in 4D and they're in control of 4D. Now, we have the potential to go way past where they are. We do if we if we just learn how to build up our... To build up our energy bodies and you know work on our soul and our ability to move to move things um and it's important also to understand that yes they do have access to us to like alter our 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 minds you know possibly sometimes make decisions for us when we start to understand that you know everything we're looking at in the world is not just what we've been taught and we understand there's outside influences, that's a game changer. Everything that we see going on in this uh, greater plan that's underway, as I'm burning some sage, um, is, is all about keeping you from going on up to 5D where they no longer control you. Because you have the potential to go up to 5D where they don't have any power. Now, a large part of our Galactic Federation is on 5D. Our contact is on 5D. We've seen her manifest in 3D. So, you know, it it is possible, although it's, it's not easy for her because, again, one of the things that has happened in the past to this planet is it's been irradiated. There have been the Wars of the Gods that actually involved NUKE weapons. And these weapons create an intolerable energy, frequency, and resonance that is, it is, it's intolerable to the higher beings. And this is why, this is a big part of why we see them here in the first place. This is a big part of why you see NUKE power. This is a big part of why you see Fukushima. It's it's all about keeping the good benevolent entities away and you know basically keeping us locked in a lower vibration. It's it's affecting all of us. We are all being irradiated all the time. And again, that's all part of keeping us low. When you when you look at the Sumerian Kings list, you see people ruling for tens and tens of thousands of years. We have the potential to live so much longer than you would think. Way more. And yeah. I'm not talking 120 years. Mm-hmm. Way more. Like when you look to the yugas, in the golden age, humans average a 100,000-year lifespan. Many people will say, I can't believe that. But then they're, they're, they just don't understand energy and the energy body. And, and that's, you know, of course, you're going by the J.D. R.O.C.K., F E L L A R school of M E D C I N E. That's really important to note too, that the, how we, how we have been taught to take care of our health didn't come from medicine men. It came from business people. So when you recognize too, and, and, and yes, there are great nuggets 
in the Bible. There are great nuggets in many different books all around the world. Uh, you know, I think the Tao Te Ching is so incredibly inspired, and I wish everybody in, in the West would actually read it and read some other things. Read the Upanishads. The Upanishads teach like biblical parables for the most part very easy to understand mm -hmm. great universal truths that come across uh and then go into so many other books you know read the bhagavad gita the mahabharata and understand things things are clearly told there that we live many many lives reincarnation is it's the reality we are eternal consciousness that's what we are now you know we're basically energy these bodies are vehicles for us to have this 3D experience. This is, this is a ride. In so many ways, you could almost look at it like this. We're, we're playing a, a virtual reality game with intense emotions. Intense, it's just plain old intense. But in reality, it kind of is a VR game. Mm -hmm. Because this is not our normal state of being. And when you look to the Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, and it talks about the Atman, you know, the eternal self, not burned by fire, you know, not quenched by water, indestructible, never a time when it wasn't, never a time when it won't be. That's our core nature. When Yeshua said, I and the Father are one, what was he saying? Was he saying that only he has that connection to the Father, the Father being Spirit, if we want to equate the Father being Shiva, that which is not, that which is pure consciousness, not yet manifest, Shakti being the manifest, and the ability to manifest into a more physical form down through the densities, the Mother, that, that gives birth to all these different realities on different levels. If it was only him, how could we possibly do greater things than, than him? He told us that we will. No, it, he recognized that source is in him. He knew source was in him. This is why he could do all those miracles. And a woman touched him, wanting to be healed. And he looked because he felt the power coming out of him as it went into her. And again, how many times did he say, your faith has healed you? And they ask for the forgiveness of their sins. And he says, you know, go ahead. You're forgiven. Live your life. Is, is it only him that has power of forgiveness of sins? Or is it the rec recognition that, hey, I've screwed up. I'm going to forgive myself. Because as long as I carry this baggage, I'm drowning myself. Forgiveness is for you. And when you forgive others, you're forgiving yourself. This is one of the keys to enlightenment. We have to get out of the mindset of, you know, I'm less than, I'm inferior, I'm constantly screwing up, I'm worthless. You have to start cultivating and realizing that I am eternal. Yeah, the body might not be eternal. I might be leaving this body, you know, in, in 30 years, 50 years, 20 years, two weeks, a day, who knows? The body's not eternal. Although some have achieved the rainbow body. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes there's residue left, sometimes there's not. It, it's really not the point. The point is that our consciousness goes on. The war of the gods is very, very real. And so when the Gigi came, they obviously were of a very, very warlike nature, like the Anunnaki, like the Draco, under whose uh, power they are. There were all sorts of different beings here. And again, there's it's a misdirection uh, of sorts to think that somebody like Isis or Osiris was Anunnaki, because they're not Anunnaki. And we can't put all the gods into one basket. Many different types of beings there were many different types of giants here as well, not just one race of giants. Uh, Thor, for instance, we've reached out and we've remote viewed Thor, and he still is. He was a being. So 
you know, there's one channel, North, uh, North Myth and Legends uh, and Magic, I think it goes by, uh, that I do like the gentleman. And, uh, you know, he talks a lot about it, but he was basically, you know, basically boiling down Thor to being just a force of nature that we can all tap into. In one sense, yes. Uh, in another sense, more than that. Because, you know, Thor was a being, and yet, as we've talked about before, if you look to Indra, for instance, in the Vedic mythologies, Indra was a being, but Indra is a title as well. And again, Indra is a storm god, lightning and thunder like Thor. And yet it's a title. Um you know, so it's something to recognize. It is a line of energy that we all can tap into. And yet when we look to see, well, where is Thor now? Well, he's in 4D. You, you had said he's in basically upper 4D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in, a, he's in a higher 4D. What he likes to do is he loves his energy. He loves to perfect it. He loves to understand it. He loves to manipulate it. And that's that's what he does. And he's he's also a protector, too. And a very real being. And yes, he could go up into 5D, but he actually prefers 4D. See, it's a matter of choice. If we can raise ourselves up in consciousness to the part, point where we are working more towards the greater good and helping others, it gives us a lot more freedom. As long as we're trapped into the lower vibrational frequencies of jealousy, anger, hatred, rage, you know, our actual ability to make choices decreases when we're in those lower vibrational frequencies we kind of like get pulled down like a magnet to certain areas and i know we're going a little bit long but i just want to give those people that want a little more detail a little more detail so when we look to north mythology we have the vanir and the aesir and there was a war of the gods between them and then at some point they kind of merged now when we're talking vanir and aesir when these wars were happening, it was basically in a time frame that was more in the Atlantean frame, more in the 4D, when Earth was kind of shifting and, and heading on down in vibrations. So, yeah, these beings, for the most part, are more of a being that the people that were living on Earth would have actually seen. Uh, like the Tuatha de Danann, for instance. Uh, the tribe of Danu, they 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 actually were a physical tribe of beings, real physical people that were here on the planet. And, you know, again, did they come from Atlantis? Did they end up in India and then end up moving from India across the continent and up into Ireland? That's kind of what my instincts and, and my intuition says. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree. When I look into that information, it's it's very much like that. And they like to try to just keep us in a place where we think these are just stories, just stories, nothing more than just made up stories. But no, these are very real beings that lived here in a time where life was very, very magical. And, you know, the good news is, is we're headed back that way. Yes. And I want to get into just a little bit as you look at some of the goddesses of, of Vanaheim and, uh, the fact that there are archetypes too. There are archetypes which are given for us to emulate. So let me ask any of you guys out there, have you, I, I'm sure you played a lot of the modern role playing. Do you, does anybody out there, have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons where it was just basically a pencil and a paper and a die? You know, there's different characteristics you could draw on for your character. And yeah, you know, what you're in right now, it's an avatar. You know, it's just a vehicle for your for your, the eternal consciousness that is the real you. Yet there are certain archetypes we could pull from. And there's certain energy currents we could pull from to create a particular life. And, you know, yeah, you do have the different elements. Again, you might feel like if we look to your star chart, if we look at up at your, you know, Vedic astrological chart, and we see, you know, what the stars were like, we could tell, okay, well, this person's got a lot more fire in them as far as the elemental makeup, or they might be fiery and, and also have an air dominance. There's different 
elements, there's different tendencies that come from these divine archetypes. So what I was saying before, there was an individual who incarnated as Indra, and it's a title. And Indra is kind of a protector, very much like Thor of, of Earth. And yet it's a title. So there might be more than one Indra. Every age actually has its own Indra. And you could even go into the bigger scope of things and go out with the greater gods. It's the same thing. So there are these archetypal forces that we can still pull from as well, like more of an earth goddess or more of a sun goddess or more of a goddess of the sea. You know, this is part of the bigger picture. And when we look at the Aesir, you see the all-father Odin there in the middle. And then you see his, his family tree coming off and you see Thor and you see many others. And we see Nana. Interesting that we have Inanna. You know, there are people, there are beings, again, we could look, that, that were very physical, and then there's others that are not necessarily ever physical on this plane of existence, and yet are very, very real and do have an influence on this plane of existence. So there are the beings that when we're in <clears throat> the golden age, we could actually raise ourselves up in, in meditation and in prayer and, <clears throat> and converse with them and actually see the reality of these beings that when we're in a lower 3d and the uh you know even in the iron age as well as obviously the the dark age of the kali yuga they're so far away maybe every once in a while we could get a, a touch of that beautiful energy that they bring us and you know cindy has been such a blessing to me because many times i've touched on these energies but i haven't been able to have direct conversations with them whereas her being able to trance channel as well as channel consciously it's an incredible blessing uh, because i've gotten to know these these energies so much better and they are magnificent not that all these were magnificent like the ones walking on this planet itself very much like us, you know, they're a mixture uh, of energies, and at times they they might be dominated by their lower vibrations, uh, depending on the situation. Well, yeah, that's another thing that one should remember about the gods is they're still very much um, kind of human. They have emotions, you know, and there could be jealousy and rage and all of these other emotions. Have they learned how to master them better? Absolutely, because they have had the lifetimes of experience and they do remember who they are and what they're about. So when we do tap into these entities, um, we, we can actually feel them. We can feel their experiences. We can feel how, how they act and, and react. So in the case of Yeshua, by the way, which, which we got his star lineage is basically... Uh, Palladian, Octurian, and human. And, you know, in reality, in a sense, yes, he was basically a virgin birth in a sense. But we can understand that now with how we can manip manipulate DNA, how we could create something in test tubes and then go ahead and, you know, implant it into the body. Um, he, you know, is mostly in fifth density because he wants to stay close to us and he's still guiding us right now. But he goes between 5th, 6th, and 7th. He's a very high-frequency being. He, he is, and he's very helpful, but he really respects free will. You know, so if you don't ask, you don't get. And one thing that I got while channeling Yeshua is he is extremely careful to not interrupt one's experience. He felt in his lifetime while he was walking the planet his experience was interrupted and he doesn't want to ever do that to anyone else. So we really have to want and have a desire to reach and connect with him so that he will connect back. But also remember, as he does connect back, he doesn't want to mess with your free will. And he's not demanding your worship in, in a way um, that actually irritates him in a, in a way. He wants you to realize your own ability. He wants you to become more like him. He wants you to become an anointed one in the sense that 
you are exhibiting and developing the Christ consciousness, which again is the bridge between the three lower chakras and the three upper chakras. It's the heart chakra that will lead us to unity consciousness. So he wants you to emulate him and not necessarily worship him. And if everybody emulated him, wouldn't the world be better than it is now? You know, how far has the worship of him gotten us? Look at the situation in the world. It's pretty obvious. It's not about blood sacrifice. It never was about blood sacrifice. That's the twisting. It was about the actual teachings, which again is cultivating the divine within, freeing yourself by letting go of judgment, letting go of any sort of grudges, no hatred. We have to look at things with a sort of Buddhist detachment, even when it's going to be hard to do that. When we see atrocities going on, you know, he got angry, overturned the money lenders because that's the system in which people are controlled by. And we still are controlled to this day by that system. But still, it didn't consume him. He was able to control that. And it's all about the Merkaba. He was seen in the Americas, even though he might have been, you know, in a mountain in the Himalayas, or he could have been in Judea or Samaria or in Egypt. If he could go into a meditative state, he could manifest that Merkaba and use the Merkaba to pop up anywhere across the globe. And Sri Yukitswar, who was the teacher to Yogananda when he was getting close to death, he appeared to Yogananda, who was over 100 miles away, in a physical body. There are yogis that have been able to do this, to manifest a physical body. There are saints that have been seen in two places at once. Yeshua could do that, and Yeshua did go to the Americas as well. He did. That's that's also another thing that I got, and he's just such a gentle, loving being and definitely wants to anyone who does want to learn from him. Just reach out to him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it could be uh, as simple as Yeshua, Shalom, 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 Yeshua, Shalom, 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 just asking for peace. It, it, you could do your own mantra, just reach out to him and he will come to you. And it's the same thing with any of the benevolent beings. I would always go and try to reach out to the most benevolent ones, the ones of the higher vibration, uh, first and foremost. And you could ask them for help and guidance, and they are there. And you might not hear them literally, but you might get intuitions and sparks. So we want to thank you guys for being part of the family. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys, especially in this age of uh, you know, demonization, so to speak. And, and we're so happy to see all the positive experience and feedback coming back from medicinal foods. There's a link at the top of every video. And when you do order from them, it does support the channel. We want to ask for everybody to send out your prayers for the whole world, that this whole world might lift up as many people as possible, might be able to escape and move up into that fifth density where we truly have heaven on earth. And we pray that illumination will come and that the dark matrix will fall away. God bless and namaste. Namaste.